Hi, welcome back to a new video. Today, Intel Battle Mage Time B580. That is the successor of last year's released A580. That was a little bit of a problematic graphics card. Just from the hardware, it was already quite nice, but it had a lot of issues with the driver, as you surely know. Meanwhile, the driver aged quite well, and a lot of stuff is fixed, so I have hope for the B580. Because at least looking at all the specs and also the pricing, this is definitely interesting. The B580 has 12 GB of VRAM versus the RTX 4060 only having 8 GB of memory and this also being about 50 US dollar higher or more expensive when you're just looking at the MSRP. So just those facts already are looking quite promising, but I think it will all just come down to the driver and how things will work out. You surely saw the Seasonic Maclow fans in one of my videos before. Seasonic also offers them in an ARGB version. With a different fan blade design, RGB inside the frame and also subtle RGB in the center, these fans focus on both design and performance. The Maclow ARGB are also daisy chainable and can easily be expanded and connected by the integrated magnets that couple the fans without additional clips or tools. Seasonic also includes a small RGB controller if you want to avoid annoying software issues. Find out more in the link below. Another difference between the RTX 4060 and the ARC B580 is the TDP. This one is rated at 190 watt and this one is rated at 115 watt, which in absolute is not that much, but percentage wise, it can be quite a lot. And that's also what we will see in some of the gaming benchmarks. And talking about the gaming benchmarks, today's selection is probably a bit more unusual, but I chose titles that are more popular on Steam rather than popular as a benchmark. But the reason for that is that I want to check what yeah, the broad audience might experience with this card when we're looking at the driver. Because at least from my perspective, I won't really care that much if it's maybe 5-10% slower or faster in some of the games. I just want to see that it works. That would be the main objective, at least from my perspective, for Intel, especially looking at the previous ARC cards. We have what Intel calls the limited edition ARC design. It is design-wise very similar or close to the previous card and I think it looks pretty awesome. It has a single 8-pin PCIe connector. If you flip it around, you can see this big hole here or where you can see the heatsink. That is for the cooling, so the PCB is essentially just this long. Then we have the ARC B580 logo on the back side and everything is I'm not sure if this is soft touch, but I think the back side, this is aluminium, but the front surely is plastic at least, sounds like it. And if I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if this is the same stuff, but like 10 or 15 years ago, there were plenty of graphics cards that were featuring soft touch surfaces and 10 years later, they all became bad. Like they had this very sticky and weird surface. I'm not sure if this is the same and it will end the same. If it's the case, yeah. Not sure, but I guess we will find out in 10 years. One more thing that might be interesting is the PCIe slot connection that is also similar to the RDX 4060, which only also occupies half of the slot. You can clearly see that by the capacitors on the PCI Express slot. So this is 4.0 times eight. Only half of the slot is used, which should be fine for like the bandwidth the card needs because it's not a high-end GPU. But it might be something to keep in mind if you're still running a 3.0 motherboard, then you will only run half the bandwidth. I quickly want to point out that I only had roughly a day for my review because Monday morning Intel pointed out that there will be an updated driver Monday evening, which at least officially communicated should not have affected any of the games that I selected. But I still wanted to test with the latest driver, which is why I waited and then only started once the driver became available, had about a day for testing, then today Wednesday shooting, so it will be available tomorrow. The video is not as detailed as I wanted it to. We might do like a follow-up video on it, but we will see. I tested everything on X870E with uh, 7600X 3D, which I think should be just fine in terms of what these cards can deliver performance-wise. This is a sample I received from Mine Factory. I just want to point out that anything that's a sample in my videos, you will find that listed in the description. So feel free to check that out. There you will not find this RTX 4060 because this is a card that I bought for under 300 euro, which is definitely below the MSRP, at least here in Germany. So that's also something to consider that meanwhile, the 4060s, at least some of them on the market are a bit cheaper than what is maybe expected. And they, that might make it more difficult for the B580, at least for the start. 
Now the first benchmark, 3D Mark Times by Extreme GT1, which features 4K resolution. And honestly, I was surprised by the performance. That is insane. We see 45 FPS on average, which is also a plus of 45%. That is a lot. As usual in my charts, you can see the FPS in yellow and the average power consumption in blue. All the charts you will find Intel on top, Nvidia on the bottom. Usually I sort it by minimum FPS, which didn't really make a lot of sense while testing two GPUs and I think it's easier to digest if they're always the same position. On the right side you will always find the difference between the B580 to the RTX 4060, as I said before in this case, a performance plus of 45%, but also increased power consumption of 23%. And with 190 watt under load, the B580 basically consumed exactly what is listed in the TDP. Plus 45% performance? I had to double check to make sure that this is correct, which it seemed to be. But then I started testing the games and there it was a little bit different. For example, if we look at Counter-Strike 2 in 1440p resolution, the B580 is about 12% lower in the average FPS and about 21% lower in the 1% load. At the same time, it also consumes more power. And the RTX 4060 with 109 watt on average consumes about 22% less. While the RTX 4060 was about 20% faster in Counter-Strike 2, at least in my resolution setting and in this scenario, I also had the opposite scenario in a different game. And this scenario was Cyberpunk 2077 with 1080p resolution without ray tracing. And exactly in this scenario for me, the B580 was 25% faster on average, while it was only 4% faster in the 1% lows. But it also consumed again much more power, 50% more and that was a total of 179. Still this looked pretty promising. Switching to Apex Legends with 1440p resolution, they were pretty much on par. I would see a plus 3% on average, minus 4% on 1% low, that's not really a big difference. But again, bigger difference in the power consumption, B580 about 59% more than the RTX 4060. In Valorant, the performance deficit in 1440p was a little bit higher with 7 to 14%, while again, B580 consuming 30% more. There was one thing I noticed in plenty of my tests, and that was that in some scenarios, the B580 was not consuming as much power as I expected. I would expect a GPU to just get close to its TDP. That's what I saw, for example, in Times by Extreme. So it was just running the 190 watt under load. Then I was running my first test with Assassin's Creed Mirage. And I think the card consumed like 100 watt or something. So it was, it was a lot less, which, which is typically an indicator for the card not running on its limit. And I would not expect the 7600X 3D, even though it's not the most high-end CPU, but it should be fast enough to power a B580 or a 4060. So it shouldn't be the CPU that it's limiting. And this was sometimes a little bit odd. I also want to highlight that I did not have enough time to set up like a full fresh Windows. So I was running the same Windows before on the RTX 4060, then used display driver uninstaller just to just get rid of any residues from previous drivers, then ran the B580. In between I switched back to double check some stuff, reinstalled, double checked everything. I always had the same results, but some of the results just looked not quite right or didn't feel quite right, but it's, it's just the results that I had. So I just want to point out that I'm, I have a little bit of mixed feelings about some of the results, but that's just what I have. That might be why I'm seeing this low result in Assassin's Creed Mirage. Not quite sure why this is the case. I double checked with other reviewers, also double checked with Intel and the reviewers were seeing different numbers and also Intel. So I'm not quite sure what was going on, but that, that's just the result I had with Assassin's Creed Mirage. But the biggest problems I encountered were with PUBG and also unfortunately Intel could not reproduce these. The game was launching in windowed mode, which is something that can happen, but unfortunately I just couldn't change it. If I tried to click on the option, nothing changed and I couldn't even check the resolution. So typically where I could click on the resolution and change it maybe to 1440p or 4K, there was just no option. It was just grayed out. And also if I was checking in the lobby just behind my character, I could see some small arti artifacts. It's not easy to see and you might miss this if you're not a regular player of PUBG. But then I also switched into the training map to just see if there's anything else that's maybe going wrong. And you can see those white artifacts that were happening in the background. So something was not right here. Fortunately, I could force the full screen mode in 1440p by just editing the config file and this way just force the game to do it. But I'm not sure why it didn't work out before. However, it didn't fix the performance. 
I was again about 40% behind, which just doesn't seem right. Again, I tried a lot of stuff, but I just couldn't find why it was running at this low performance, but it just doesn't look correct. If we're thinking about where the ARC cards came from, how they started, I think this is pretty promising because overall it was really just PUBG where I had bigger problems. The rest, like insane performance plus in Cyberpunk where I don't know where it comes from and then minus 20% in another game where I also don't know where it comes from. But I think that might be fixable due to driver updates and I'm pretty sure that Intel will keep working on that as they already did with the previous R cards. So there's surely hope about that. If you're now looking at a choice of both cards, the RTX 4060 surely is the much more mature card, especially looking at how well the Nvidia driver performs, but it also comes with four gigabyte less VRAM, which is something that is quite nice about this card coming with 12 gigabyte. Then again, I'm pretty sure the driver is like not fully mature, not really finished, but talking with other reviewers, seeing their results, I think overall, this is pretty promising. And I'm thankful to Intel for not killing Arc because after the first ARC generation, I was not quite sure if they will keep investing time and money into developing this segment, but I think they did pretty well overall, and I hope they will continue to do so. Especially if you think about that one day, maybe Intel might be able to compete also in the high-end segment. If you think about having more competition for Nvidia, this might be something to bring down graphics card prices, which is something every consumer would benefit from. So that's something I want to support and I think, or I hope that they will keep working on this. But first look, not too bad. I hope they will continue to work on the driver. Unfortunately, the video was not as detailed as I hoped or as I wanted to. I wanted to do overclocking and TDB modification and all that, but I just didn't have time. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.